Minecraft. Also try Mountain Blade. Don't tell me what to do, I'm gonna play Minecraft! This is going to be episode number 64 of Exploration and Tactics with Brian. And in this episode, we've got it all. We've got slimes, we've got diamonds, we've got storytelling, we've got enchanting. We've got a long episode, so let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to more Minecraft Exploration and Tactics with Brian. And I forget which episode it was that I just uploaded. But it was an episode where I was over in this direction, breeding some sheep and getting some wool. And I needed to get some iron for some shears. And so I went down into a little cave system and dug up some iron. And as I was coming back out, apparently there was a zombie dungeon on the screen. And I didn't see it when I was playing the game. I didn't see it when I was editing the footage afterwards. But you guys saw it because you guys see everything. And so I would like to... Conquer said zombie dungeon and take up its mossy cobblestone and put it in our little count of zombie dungeons in the hall of structures or whatever I'm going to call that place. And so that is where we are headed right now. I'm headed back over there. And yeah, we're actually right there because basically you could just see the plains and the hills over here. And otherwise, in this episode, I have... Well, one main thing that I would like to accomplish or start accomplishing, which is to start creating a slime farm, which is something I have never done before. And so that could be interesting. And then the other thing is to talk about various things that have happened of late, such as Kurt J. Max live stream. Hello, happy sheep. Where is the little place where I, uh, yeah, it was right over here. Kurt J. Max live stream, as well as the first episode of Ultra Hardcore. So I'm recording this on Monday night after I watched a smattering of Ultra Hardcore episodes that got posted. Uh, and so I already want to perhaps talk about some Ultra Hardcore stuff. But basically, this is the little cave system that we were in. And somewhere right over here on the right, right up here, apparently there's a zombie dungeon. Ah, it was a spider dungeon. People saw the cobblestone, and a zombie had walked over from this area. But it was not a zombie dungeon. It was a spider dungeon, and so I'm just going to take a quick peek a little bit farther. All right. And then we will see what we have won. It's a small dungeon with just the one chest. All right, some saddles. Eventually, we were going to have some epic pig riding. I will go ahead and gather this up. I am going to use my... And we got cat. I'm going to have to make a, uh, I guess I spent all of my diamonds that I found so far in tools, but when I find some more diamonds, we're going to have to make a jukebox player at some point, or I guess not a jukebox player, a jukebox or a record player. <laughs> Get the words right so that we can play cat and then we might have to go and try to go fighting at night in the desert and get a whole bunch of skeletons to kill creepers so that we can get some of the other records uh, so that we can listen to them at our leisure. Or especially if I end up ever working on a big build and want to do kind of a talky episode, um, it would be great to have kind of like the jukebox going in the background. So that's something that I would like to do. All right, but we have collected up all of the moss stone. We will go back home and drop off a piece of it in the hall of structure, again, whatever I'm going to call it. And I brought a bed along simply because I figured, hey, here's a chance to get experience. Hooray! Wind chimes! I'm already up to level 18. Awesome. I brought a bed along simply because I thought the traveling time there and back, uh, it might turn nighttime. And yes, indeed, it's about to turn nighttime, so long as I'm here. Uh, of course, I didn't bring along any iron or shears again. And so I guess I won't shear any extra sheep. Um... And it actually doesn't take long to get back, and so I guess I will meet you guys back home, and then we'll go work on the slime farm. So I'll make a cut and see you guys in a moment. And I'm able to make it back home before nightfall, while my cow farm is definitely annoying in terms of all the sound of all the cows. Having basically an unlimited supply of steak and being able to sprint jump everywhere is pretty handy. Ooh, and in the future I'll be able to enter pearl places too. Oh, that's going to be great. I am looking forward to doing everything big in this world. Hello, little villager who is in the blown-up creeper house that I still haven't repaired. I guess I need to do that as well. I just heard a zombie breaking down a door, didn't you? 
Hmm, I thought I did. Now I don't. In any case, I should go ahead and sweep away the night so we don't have any more zombies spawning. All right, I'll meet you guys downstairs. Oh, and it turns out I already had cat, but now I have two copies. House fixed. And we'll add one to the zombie dungeon count. Now we have three, along with three spider dungeons. Oh, wait. It wasn't a zombie dungeon. It was a spider dungeon. <laughs> there we go. Four to two. All right, so as I was saying, I have never built a slime farm before. But I seem to recall at one point we saw a big slime down at the bottom of this ravine. And a couple other times I saw, like, slimes committing suicide around here. And so I think that means that probably this area here is a slime chunk. And, yeah. Like I said, I don't have any experience doing this. I'm not going to use any, like, external programs that, like, tell you where the slime chunks are and things like that. I figure I've spotted a... Blah, blah. I've spotted a slime over here, uh, and so that's a good reason as any in order to try to hollow out some room and hope we get some slimes to spawn. Um, and so that's what I intend to do, is basically kind of like hollow out and light up some more area around here in the hopes of just kind of encouraging some slimes, and then over time kind of like see what happens and see if I gain any more confidence that it is indeed a slime area. And I guess also could be the case that slimes have been spawning and then like possibly like hopping in the lava or something. And so I guess I will go ahead and do that just in case. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to hollow some stuff out and I'll bring you guys back in a little bit. All right, so I've hollowed out kind of one floor down here and another one up here, kind of working under the assumption, hello, Creeper, uh, that this area might be a slime chunk. I haven't hit F3 to like look for multiples of 16 or any stuff like that, but it occurs to me that until I have more of the surrounding area lit up, uh, there's no way I'm going to get very good yields anyway. Um, and so I'm really going to need to light up a whole lot more of cave systems to prevent other mobs like this creeper from spawning uh, and thus make it more likely that slimes will spawn in sped instead since slimes can spawn in the light. And so I'm going to do some more cave lighting up. Uh, and yeah, depending upon how interesting it is, I may show it to you or I may cut it out. I'm in the mood for adventure. I need to get over to light up this side of the ravine. And it just so happens that I thought about this beforehand, and just on a whim, I grabbed one of the ender pearls that I already have. So let's just take a shot and see if we can get over to the other side of the ravine like this. Hooray! Right over where I just killed the skeleton. Neat. That was fun. I'm going to enjoy using ender pearls as kind of a way to do crazy, dynamic, parkour -y kind of crazy stuff in Minecraft. Moving forward... But yeah, I'm going to light along kind of like the top edges of these ravines where I've been seeing mobs spawning. I don't know how you can see, blah, I don't know how well you can see him, but I am being tracked by a creeper. Hello, creeper. You want to get near me, don't you? But there's a big old ravine between you and me. If only there were some type of weapon that could get across that gap. Oh, it's a bow and arrow. Oh, the zombie noises I'm hearing are not them breaking the villagers. It's the stronghold that's... Are... Well, maybe that is the villagers. Crap. What time of day is it? It is nighttime. I'm afraid that my village is being uh, attacked by zombies right now. Um, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I'm not sure. Well, that's more than 16 blocks above me. I guess I don't know how far away you can hear doors being broken because the stronghold could be like 16 blocks below me and the village might be 16 blocks above me or even more oh i don't know uh for the most part i've gotten most of what i need out of the villagers and i really do think it's pretty well lit up there and so i do think it's more likely that i'm hearing zombies in the stronghold but i guess when we get them back uh after this little mighting well after this little lighting vision blah, i cannot speak after this little lighting mission when we go back upstairs to the village, we'll have to take a walk around and see if we have any missing doors, or missing villagers for that matter. Okay, I declare Operation Light Up This Ravine a success. I've gone around the perimeter, and I'll probably take a lot of damage doing this, but yeah! Oh yes! He hits the jump. Woohoo! Alright, I just wanted a quick way down. Um, it occurs to me I'm already up to level 19. Um, and so at some point in the not-too-distant future, presumably, I will be 
able to get up to level 30 and try to do another uh, enchant of some sort. And so it would not hurt if I were to uncover some more diamonds. So I think I will go down to the diamond layer now and do a little bit of caving. And so I will meet you when I find some dark areas that start to get interesting. Nope, I hear a slime. So I'm over here by the spider dungeon. The stronghold is just around the corner, but I hear a slime somewhere in this direction. And if we have multiple slime chunks around here, I would like to know it. Oh, that's the stronghold again. All right, well, I guess it's always fun to have stronghold bricks as well. I can't remember if when I was exploring the stronghold before, if we encountered slimes. That is a weird lighting bug. Sounds like he's right around this corner. Hello, slime. There he is. Oh, this will be good. Oop, yeah, gosh. I forgot. Slimes are dangerous in multiplayer, also known as single player. Oops, I hear... Oh, oh, my, oh my gosh. Like, holy cow. I guess I have not encountered that many big slimes in Minecraft, kind of regardless. Um, but wow, I mean, I'm wearing... I guess it's not full iron armor because I don't have a chest plate on. But I'm wearing a fair bit of iron, and that was a lot of damage. The fact that he's glitchy and was able to hit me from a distance, and not sure if I'm hitting him at all. There, I finally got a hit on him. Uh, that played into it a little bit as well. But oh my goodness. Wow! Yeah, just wow. All right, let's break him down into smaller pieces. There is a zombie around somewhere, obviously, who I'm not too concerned about. And then people were all over me the other episode, oops, when I was hitting the small ones with something like a sword that does overkill rather than punching them. So now I'm going to punch them, and sure enough, getting lots of slime balls, so that's a great. And so even without a slime farm, I just got 14 more, so I could practically double the size of my Enderman farm with that. Um, but okay, so now I want to... Yeah, basically we had a large slime spawn in here, and so here's the thing that I was thinking about doing, which is basically anywhere I see a large slime has spawned. Uh, he couldn't have spawned outside of this room. I guess there's a tiny chance he spawned somewhere up here, but I think he had to have spawned inside of this room. And so I'm going to make some sticks <laughs> and then I'm going to make a sign. Ooh, three signs, I believe actually. Yes, three signs, sign stack, awesome. And I don't have any inventory space, right? And I'm going to put a sign, actually, let's go ahead and create some more spawning room for the slime by taking out these half slabs. So we got a nice big open flat area here. Uh, but I'm going to put a sign on the wall of this room that says, slime here. So I know that this is one of the places uh, that slimes can spawn. And I feel like if I do that, you know, in a few places or whatever, like over time, I will learn where the slime chunks are. And I must be carrying... Yeah, I've got all kinds of, like, uselessly doubled-up inventory and things. Oh, right, I'm getting stronghold bricks, and I've got slightly over a stack of torches, and blah, 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 blah. All right, I'm going to do uh, some more. I'll go back to what I was originally going to do, which was go exploring for diamonds. Something I just noticed is that redstone gives you a lot more experience than, say, coal. So as I'm mining up this coal, it's like ding, 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 occasionally. Redstone, watch this. More happy wind chimes. Yeah, definitely more wind chimes there, and so that is pretty cool. So redstone might have just become my favorite ore in the game. It's also going to be good because, of course, I need it for uh, the pistons that I'm going to be building, as well as eventually I'll need it for kind of like long-lasting potions... Uh, when we finally find a nether fortress. Uh, it sounds like, as I, I can't remember if I've mentioned it already in an episode, uh, there's currently a bug in the game where if you kind of like enter and re-enter the nether, sometimes you like fall through the world because the chunks are unloaded and stay unloaded. Uh, it sounds like there may be a 1.3.2 update to the game that will fix that bug, and so I might not go back to the nether uh, until said bug is remedied. Uh, but in the meantime, we have plenty of stuff that we need to do out here in the real world. This is not the most efficient coal mining thing I'm doing right there. But that's okay if I lose some coal. Nothing too harmful. Oh, I thought that water was going to run in there. Okay, that was a little bit dangerous. 
Um, yes. Let's see. And... I guess I see, I believe, a creeper on the right. I hear... Oh, those are my own footsteps. <laughs> I was going to say, I hear footsteps. It's me walking underwater. It would be kind of interesting if your uh, footsteps were muffled. Oh, I thought that was a creeper that I saw. It's a zombie. Hello, zombie. Who will start walking slowly after I hit him with a sword for no good reason. Gotcha. Wind chimes. All right, we'll look over here for diamonds in a moment. Here's another zombie. So while I'm caving, I like to talk about topics if I have them. And so I do have a couple, as I mentioned earlier in the episode. Uh, so one is the next Mindcrack UHC season has begun. Uh, like I said, it's Monday night, and I watched... There's like 15 people this round or something, uh, which is too many to watch any everyone of. Uh, and so I have some of my favorite players that I like to watch, including Kurt and Etho. Um, and then I did, you know, a smattering of watching other folks. I also watched uh, Nebris. Uh, Nebris, in general, I tend to mostly like the strategy that he employs, and uh, he's gotten off to a good start in this one. Uh, but basically, if you've not seen episode one of Minecraft Ultra Hardcore and you don't want spoilers, now might be a good time to turn away, as much as I hate to turn you away from all the excitement of me looking for diamonds and exploration and tactics, as well as other ores. We'll gather up this iron and this redstone, redstone wind chimes. All right, that wasn't quite as many wind chimes. We'll find some more redstone. It'll be awesome. So yeah, Nebris. Uh, basically, Gude had misplaced his iron that he started smelting. And Nebris found a crafting table and a furnace full of iron. And so he just grabbed it and ran off. And so that is a super great start when you can get kind of like a fistful of iron that, you know, someone else uh, mined for you. Okay, this did kind of come around in a circle. I can't remember if there were other ores over here that I passed up. Plenty of coal. Gosh, I am such a coal magnet now that it has the wind chimes. Uh, it is it is crazy town. Although, admittedly, it was good that I mined up all this coal because in the previous episode... Um, oh, my inventory is full and clogged full of crap. Um, um, I will just do that for right now and put off having to make decisions, but I guess I won't be able to mine lapis right now. How much coal am I at? Yeah, I can still mine a whole lot more coal before I reach a stack. Um, so yeah, that got Nebris off to a good start in terms of iron. Um... And then, at some point, he happened to stumble upon b -O. He saw him from a long distance away. And even when I had it full screen, like, I did not spot b -O when he first saw him. Um, and so, I don't know, like, these people who play Minecraft, Minecraft, but Minecraft Ultra Hardcore, some of them have, like, crazy big bright monitors that they can just, like, see, like, I'm awful at seeing names. Uh, but they can see names from so far away. Which is a great advantage in PvP. And so we saw a BWO, and BWO had already had a run in with Milby and was pretty down on hearts. And so that went well for Nebris, or Nebris, uh, and not so well for BWO for the first kill. But it was good. Nebris was always a pretty kind of aggressive player or whatever in that strategy. Uh, if you know what you're doing, seems to play off, pay off. Uh, and Nebris definitely knows uh, what he's doing. I think he's a pretty good strategist. He'd also already like created some snow golems to try to distract folks. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to turn out. Uh, he did it when he saw... He'd actually spotted Kurt, Kurt J. Mack, uh, underground, although he wasn't sure... Wind chimes, wind chimes! Who it was he had seen. Um, and yeah, Kurt... That actually ended up slowing Kurt down a lot. Thought I just heard a footstep, but it might have just been lava bubbling. Oop, I see diamond over here. Haha. <gasps> I see diamond over here, and I just realized I didn't bring my diamond pick. All right, I was definitely, I was originally, this was, you know, just slime farming and mining out stuff. And then I changed it on the fly to be a kind of, and that was, I really don't understand how water and lava interact or fail to interact. Um, 
Yeah, I don't have a silk touch pick to bring those home to fortune either. All right, so we'll check out the coordinates uh, of those, and then I think we'll have to go back upstairs and drop off some inventory, and we'll come back and mine these diamonds. Um, yeah, and then I can pick up my story. So I will see you guys in a moment. All right, I've come back up to the village, and it's definitely the case that I'm starting to light up a good bit of the underground, just based on the number of mob spawns that I see up here. Uh, and so that is good. It's also telling me that I really do need to increase the border of torches around the village, because I do think the villages are going to be in danger of zombie attacks. Whilst I am lighting up the underground uh, as they spawn on top, and so I'm going to have to deal with that as well. But in any case, I'm going to go sleep the night away right now. Another day we will do some fighting around at night in the desert and try to earn some records. I don't really feel like doing that right now, and I want to remember where that diamond is. Item repair! Do, 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 do. All right, turns out, yes, zombies were taking down doors in the village, and so I'm going to take a moment to repair that. All right, so I've basically added another ring of torches around the village in order to give us a wider perimeter where mobs cannot spawn. And so that should help things. And I've also noticed that I have tons of wheat that needs to be harvested. So I will do that for a moment. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. And so I expect that a number of you will recognize that, uh, but that was my fast motion meow rendition of B00's intro song. Uh, I believe the lyrics are, I've had my share, and I've done my time, the good and the bad. I'm gonna fly. So if you've not checked out B-double-O, not only is he an awesome Minecraft player and builder, uh, despite the fact that he had a bad start in UHC this time around, uh, but he is also uh, quite the musical talent, uh, as well as kind of like graphics and design. Like, he's a multifaceted kind of guy, um, and also very funny. And so if you haven't been watching B-double-O, you should go check out his channel. Uh, and, um, yeah. I enjoy his music, and so that's a little bit of it. That was just in the music to, blah, in the music, in the mood to sing. Uh, and since people liked some of the fast motion meowing before, I thought I would try to do a little bit more of it. But I'm trying to come up with creative stuff that I can sing, and hopefully no one's going to sue me about. So there you go. More farming for Brian off camera. You could argue, by the way, that at this point I really should have automated farms. And I guess you're probably right, uh, but there's something both relaxing uh, and fun about kind of doing your own farming and all of a sudden you gather up a bunch of wheat. Uh, and so that is kind of cool and so I don't mind doing that. And also, you know, it's just an opportunity to do the silly things like the meowing songs. And so for the moment, I'm not gonna worry about that. It also lets me keep my sticky pistons or pistons that I'm gonna be building uh, available for the Enderman farm that I'm building in the end, but I have gotten distracted. I am holding a fortune pick because I know where there's some diamonds that I want to go grab, and so how about we go grab those diamonds? I will meet you back down there. I am walking down to my quote-unquote slime farm. Gosh, you guys really do hit hard. Um, and this area that I hauled out, sure enough, has already spawned a medium-sized slime, and so I'm going to call that a win and a victory, and so that makes me very happy. Uh, but for the moment, we will continue on. Let's hope we also get some slimes down here. We will continue on and go grab our diamonds. Hooray! And I found the diamonds without even having to look at my coordinates. Because my sense of direction does not suck. Huzzah! Ooh, and now I can also... I have to decide if I want to start using... I guess if I already have two fortune picks. And they're diamond and, like, unbreaking, right? Unbreaking three, fortune three? Yeah, I guess I can go ahead and start even using uh, fortune on things like lapis and redstone if I want to. Coal I don't think I'm going to because I think I'm still going to have tons and tons and tons of coal. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't any lava under here. But let's go ahead and one, two, three, four, five. When we get wind chimes too. Five ores yielded 14. Wow. That's insanity. That is complete insanity. Fortune, I love you. And let's try it on some lapis. 
Woohoo! Oops. Wow! Lapis already gives you a lot, but let's see. Two ore blocks, 19 lapis. That is crazy town. Crazy town! All right. Let's see, and I believe this was a dead end. Yes, because I had reached this dead end and then said I was going to turn around. I hear another slime. Let's see if we can find the slime. Just because right now I need slime balls, and until I get a really super well-working slime farm, any old slime will do in the meantime. So it sounds like he's close. I am going to... I don't think... Oh, there he is. Oh, he's up in the stronghold. Hello, slime. Uh, I don't know. I guess he is running towards me. I'm not sure if tr slimes can track you through walls. I didn't think that they could, but I could be wrong. Uh, and I can't tell. I guess that is a medium-sized slime, and so he'll need at least this much space in order to be able to fall down here, in which case he'll die of fall damage, probably, maybe? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh! Silverfish! That didn't occur to me. Huh. That actually startled me a lot. <laughs> the dangers of the stronghold. All right, now the slime should jump down here. There we go. Oops, he's going to kill me if I'm not careful. Baby slimes. All right, they're not going to kill me. They're just going to push me around. Hello. They want to be my friend. I don't want to be their friend. I'm going to punch them. Ha ha. Sadly, I got wind chimes, but no more slime balls. All right. Um, but... Once again, unfortunately, this slime may have been tracking me and may have walked from a different location, and so I'm not sure that I can put up a sign that says, you know, a slime spawned here kind of thing. Oh, it's in the same room! Ha! All right, so this is definitely a good place for slimes to spawn, in which case I'm going to go ahead and give him a floor again, and that means we're right back out near the entrance to the stronghold, so I'm going to circle back around and go back on my caving expedition. I'll bring you guys back in as it gets interesting. There is an underground room filled with at least three Endermen. So I know that Endermen spawn in packs of, I believe it's up to five. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I don't know that I've ever encountered that many in a group here. Of course, now that I have an Enderman farm to kill them, I don't really need to go after this guy. It would just be for sport. And I'm not really on that mission right now. But since I just happen to see them, and especially in the distance, like their little purple sparkly things or whatever, I think look really cool kind of in the darkness over there and just... Their purple eyes, they're nice and kind of scary at a distance. And so I just wanted to show that off. All right, let's head over towards that room that I previously saw was occupied, bleh, occupied by Endermen. Not sure if they're still here. Yep, I guess they are. I hear them. And, oh, yep, there you guys are. And we can talk more about UHC. Uh, so yeah, I mentioned Kurt kind of in passing when I was talking about Nebris. Kurt was off to a nice fast start. I was very pleased with him because I always feel that uh, his one weakness, if you can call it that, uh, in terms of me watching him or whatever, was just his kind of like slow, cautious approach uh, in terms of the entertainment value. Right now I'm just doing some lighting up and we'll go back and gather up a bunch of uh, resources after we've lit, lit a few corridors. And yeah, so we definitely got, you know, intended to get off to a faster approach and actually did. Um, he got slowed down a bit once he saw Nebris, but that was kind of a reasonable uh, thing to do at that point in terms of being worried about another player possibly coming after you. Uh, but at the same time, despite the fact that he didn't kind of accomplish his original goal, uh, which was to try to get a bow very early on, he did instead get a full suit of iron armor pretty early on, so he is in good shape. Ooh, hello. There's some lava down there. I will do that just to make things a little bit safer in the future. Um, let's see. And so, yeah, I'm happy for Kurt. He seems to be off to a good start so far. Um, and so that's good, because I enjoy watching Kurt. And which direction? I guess I want to light some of the top up. Like, we need to get everything... Oh, there's the skeleton. I keep hearing you. And I have bow and arrow. Ha-ha! And then we will build ourselves an ugly, ridiculous staircase that is not at all the best way to build it. All right, great. Wind chimes. All right, back to work. Ooh, I was just about to say, there could be holes above me. Yeah, there's like an abandoned mine shaft above me. There's all kinds of potentially treacherous things about all of a sudden. So that should make things interesting in the background as I try to 
continue on about my stories in the foreground. Let's see, who else did I watch? Good got unlucky uh, in the beginning. I've talked about the fact that so much of UHC is luck. Um, and on top of the fact that, you know, the server was laggy, which kind of affects everyone. You know, the person that it might affect most is the person who a creeper is sneaking up upon. And so Good got creepered. And as we all know, on hard mode, that was, oh, I guess it couldn't place it. I guess it thought it placed it against the torch jumped when I put it down. And I guess it's because I placed it against the side of the rail, which isn't a valid position. And so it jumped against that wall instead. I don't know that I've encountered that happening before. Interests me. I don't know that it interests you at all. You're probably saying, Brian, why don't you get back to your story? All right, I shall. Um, I'm happy that I don't hear any spiders in the mineshaft yet. Uh, what was I talking about? UHC. So yeah, Kurt was off to a fast start. Uh, Good got creepered in the forest. Admittedly, a forest is always, you know, a dangerous place. I've talked about that before. Um, I don't like the forest. I like to burn them down kind of in normal Minecraft LPs, or at least I did all the time up until they nerfed fire. Right now, it's a whole lot harder to burn down forests, I think. And there's a zombie behind the wall over here, maybe, or something. I'm not going to worry about him. I'm also not going to gather up rails. A lot of people, I will build a sky rail at some point, I'm sure. But at this point, I've already got, like, I don't know, 15 stacks of iron. So, like, I can build the rails on my own. I don't feel like trying to collect rails one at a time out of the mine shaft. Uh, it just doesn't seem like it's worth my time or fun for me. Uh, I can easily create all the rails I'm ever going to need. Because I am so incentivized to collect ores that I can get experience from, either from smelting them, in the case of iron and gold, or just collecting them out of the wall, in the case of everything else. Presumably, I guess I've never collected an emerald ore out of the wall yet. Oh, hello. We're apparently coming back up to... Not sure what that is. Like, there's one bit of light there that I'm curious about. I also hear a zombie somewhat close by. But I'm not sure where he is. Oh, he might be on the surface. Maybe it's nighttime? It is nighttime, and so I guess I am hearing a zombie on the surface. Oh, 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 oh nope. I... <laughs> uh... Good job. Nice timing. All right. I definitely need to work on that because if I were to expl ugh, display that kind of proficiency with hearing and seeing mobs sneaking up on me in UHC, that would be very bad news bears for Brian. But yes, my UHC nemesis, I don't know if you can call it a nemesis when it's more like a skill or talent or lack thereof, uh, is still PvP. PvP is the weak point in my UHC game. All right, so yeah, I watched Good, uh, or at least part of Good's video, and yeah, I saw he got unlucky with the creeper. Um, I really like, I don't think I said this already, uh, the fact that they had a small map despite the fact that they had a lot of players because it meant that there were many encounters in the first episode. We only had one death, but uh, B00 and Milby also got in some PvP before B00 got killed by Nebris. And I think more than half of the players uh, saw someone else's name at some point. And even at the end of episode one, we've got a few players... Uh, who may be kind of within range of one another. And so I think that does a bit to kind of add to the excitement uh, right at the outset. So far, it doesn't seem like structures uh, have played in too much. I think Adlington maybe. I didn't watch Adlington's video, um, but I think perhaps he had found a jungle temple thingy, uh, which I still have never seen in life in Minecraft. I'm already up to level 28, a little bit more mining, and we're going to be able to go enchant something else for the end of this episode. But yeah, I don't think anyone found a desert pyramid in episode one, uh, which has tons of gold. And so like, I think for UHC, the desert pyramid temple things, whatever they are, I think that is kind of like the, the jackpot that you can hit. Um, because then, you know, you get that, you get a few apples, and now you got way more hit points to play with. All right, this spider that I'm hearing is in fact on the surface, I am nearly certain as opposed to about to attack me from a corner. I'm going to see if this reaches a dead end very soon. But if not, I'm going to turn around and head back this way because I just passed up tons and tons of ores. Like I said, I'm not using the fortune pick on coal. And let's see. 
I think I might have covered all the UHC talk that I wanted to do so far. But in general, oh yeah, and Etho. Uh, Etho was also trying to go for kind of like a fast strategy. He immediately went downstairs. Um, although he kind of like gave up on downstairs a little too early. He hit a mine shaft and he did at least get himself the string for a bow and arrow. Uh, which is great, but I was hoping he would at least take a quick look once he got down to the diamond layer uh, to see if he could find some diamonds. But nevertheless, Etho uh, is a pretty good strategy uh, strategist and player, uh, and so if the lag doesn't bite him, uh, I think he has the potential to go far. Um, yeah, it's always... It's completely unpredictable. Like, last time I tried to like make some predictions, you know, after the first episode or two of how it's going to go. Um, this time, I think, at this point, at least, I'm not going to try to do that. Uh, I will just say that I'm going to enjoy watching, and I'm glad they're doing another season. Um, because UHC is fun to play and fun to watch. And, yeah, so that's all I need to say about it. Is my inventory really full? Oh, it's because I've got all these ridiculous stronghold bl bricks. Those are normal stone bricks, which I could craft myself, and so I will throw them away. That's a mossy stone brick, which is a rare thing. And I can always throw away a brown mushroom in a little bit if I need to as well. All right, and that's just an underground lake. So yeah, I think that's all I need to talk about in terms of UHC. And then the other thing was Kurt J. Mack's live stream for Child's Play Charity over the weekend, the Flabathon. Uh, I was actually on twice, on both Saturday and Sunday. Uh, apparently just turned daytime and skeletons are burning up. Yes, that's what my clock says. Ooh, if I'm that close to the surface, I need to make sure that I don't end up with digging upwards and having sand cave down on me from the desert. Oh, and I'm up to level 30. Guess it's time to go up, uh, go upstairs and enchant. And so... Yeah, there's skeletons up here somewhere. Let's just somewhat randomly dig up into the ceiling and see where we come up underneath a desert. Just because, why not? So I will put a torch down here. I will dig upwards until some sand falls on it. I will say, hello, spider. I will say, goodbye, spider. And then I would just pillar up on out and probably get hit by a creeper who's still up there. We'll see. I'm wearing kind of half iron armor saw a cactus and I thought it was a creeper for a moment. All right, seems like we're in good shape. Here is the skeleton who died. So yeah, to finish up my thought, uh, Kurt's live stream. It was fun to be on, uh, a pleasure to be a guest. I was actually a guest with uh, OOG for a while. Uh, Good and BWO were on uh, and Etho. Um, and then the second day, there were a lot of people towards the end because I was there at the very end when he was gonna hit F3. And, of course, there was the incident with Wolfie. Um, and, yeah, I don't know what's going to kind of happen with that. Um, yeah, we'll kind of have to see. You know, it's up to Kurt in terms of, like, how things move forward. Um, but if you didn't watch the live stream uh, and you're a fan of Kurt J. Mack and Flob, Wolfie had a little teleporting accident or something. He just kind of disappeared and glitched out of existence. Um and yeah, so that was sad. If it were me, I think I would go on without him. Uh, there's been talk about trying to either, you know, restore from backup or use MC Edit or something to try to bring Wolfie back. Um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. Um, but yes, in any case, we had lots of fun times with Wolfie in Kurt's Flob series. And so that was very sad. But apart from that, the live stream was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people were watching. There were like 7,000 people at the peak, and so that was really cool. Okay, I'm over here. I need to sock away most of these diamonds, except for... Let's take a quick look. I have a silk touch pick. I have an efficiency shovel. I have a mining pick. I have another fortune pick. And I have an unenchanted diamond pick that I already made that I didn't even realize... And then I have a diamond shovel that I have not enchanted, an efficiency shovel. Let's try a level 30 on a shovel. Just because there's something that I want to do. Oh, my enchanting table's in the end. Haha, -ha, I forgot about that. Um, is my experience going to carry with me into the end? I'm going to be really upset if it does not. So did I just create another enchanting table here so I don't have to worry about possibly glitching and losing all of my experience? Um, it's kind of a waste of a couple of diamonds, but at this point... I think I am actually going to do that. All right, I'll do that off camera. I'll be right back. 
By the way, for those of you who don't know, the book recipe is a shapeless recipe, much like mushroom stew. You can put the things in any place on the crafting grid, and so as a result, you can do it in your own 2x2 two two inventory square. Just an FYI. But in any case, let's go ahead and create another enchanting table up here. Oh, right, and then I need bookshelves. Ah, uh, sigh. Well, I have plenty of paper that I was planning to sell to the librarian, so I can use some of that for bookshelves. I'll be right back. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Occasionally, I wish you could kind of split items into thirds, but uh, the fact that you can just kind of split it in half a few times and everything evens out doesn't bother me too much. All right, so now I have my 15 bookshelves and I have my enchanting table. And so we will set things up just as I had them before, I think. How did I do this? Uh, in any case, that is right, and then I can put the last one kind of anywhere. I think I had it here before. Yeah, that'll do fine. All right, and let's try enchanting a level 30 diamond shovel. What's going... Oh, I have a torch in the way, don't I? Goodbye, torch. You are blocking my enchanting. Hello, level 30 shovel. Something good? Unbreaking 3. I was really hoping for, like, efficiency 4 or something. Ah, uh, sigh. All right. I do have a couple of efficiency 2 shovels when I was doing kind of my mad enchanting in the end. One of the things I want to do is test out kind of efficiency 2 versus an iron axe uh, to see which one chops wood better. But now that we just did an enchant, I'll have to check on how much footage we have for this episode. This might be a good place to end it. Otherwise, we might do some more. Um, yeah, I do have enough footage for today. See you all next time. Hope you're having a great day.